At one point in the night, um, this wasn't really seen to be fans on TV, but in the arena, uh, we saw after the six-man tag between the House of Black and uh, Darby Sting and Miro, we saw at the top of the stage the House of Black uh, hug, and then um, we saw Malachi kind of take a bit of a bow and blow a kiss to the fans. Um, is there anything we should all know about what's going on there, or um, was there any symbolism that, that had anything to do with it? No, I'm not sure. I can't comment on that, though. But uh, that that was uh, for the live fans, and it definitely got some people talking. So it is a thing that happened. But no, I can't comment on that. Thanks, bud. Here you go, Nick. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask about a kind of a follow-up uh, sure, about your comments about alluding to contract tampering. You, you were also asked about a potential WWE AEW Super Show, and you said not after the way they treated me. What happened? When you when you say something like that, how were you treated? What what was the exchange there with WWE? I've had a number of interactions with them, and I don't know. I just I, I'm not, you know. I I was super. I I've said a lot of nice stuff, and and I don't regret saying nice stuff because I'm super honest about pro wrestling. And when I saw good stuff happening there, I'll be the first to say it. But yeah, I just I'm not feeling the same love. Is uh, there a reason for that? I, I don't want to get into it, but uh, you know. Uh, I just haven't felt the same uh, reciprocation that I have uh, for them. Okay, Izzy. Hi, Tony. Um, hey. Izzy from Hot Side Busy. Congratulations on such a huge night. Thank you. <laughs> now, leading up to AEW All Out, there was unfortunately some reports surrounding that the AEW locker room and talent were facing some adversity. <laughs> now, in <com> now, in comparison to sports team, whenever a team faces some sort of adversity, a game win, usually pushes them over that threshold of challenges that they were facing. So with the overall success of All Out tonight, do you think that this is going to help the AEW locker room overcome those reported roadblocks? Well, I think there's still like a lot of wrestlers in professional wrestling who don't get along, and now it's more apparent than ever that there are those things. But I also think that the industry has thrived on creative tension for a long time. And then you might say, well, what if it doesn't manifest itself in a match right away? And I also think that, it, you know, as I mentioned other times this weekend, when in the 90s, which is arguably the all-time business peak and, and interest peak, and really, I think, just the general peak of pro wrestling in many ways, the late 90s and early 2000s, like, uh, you know, there was certainly a big, big group of pro wrestlers uh, who did not like each other. There are a lot of people who didn't get along and a lot of times they weren't even in the same companies and they would rip each other. <laughs> and there was, it was certainly not gonna produce a match. But that is what we produce, is wrestling matches. And there are a lot of matches uh, between people who probably don't get along and don't like each other and it's not always an easy road to get people in the ring. But when you can get people in the ring to settle their differences in the ring, it can be really exciting. Um, there's a lot of conversation about people not getting along, not liking each other. I, Definitely, definitely uh, think that it's probably more apparent than ever that there's a lot of that. Uh, I don't like, and I don't like everything either, you know, people, I don't like everything people say, and uh, there's people that have uh, said things uh, pretty blatantly, even people that like work here that have just gone out and slammed me blatantly in public, and there's only so much of it I'll take. I'm a pretty nice guy and I'm very flexible. Um, you know, it's nice being home uh, as, as a segue. I. Uh, you know, being here, seeing a lot of my friends, I have a pretty calm demeanor generally with people and I'm willing to put up with a lot of abuse. Something that came up while I was doing an interview this week was one of the guys uh, that interviewed me while I was in town. He went to the University of Illinois and we kind of put together that I had bartended for him many, many times and served him many drinks over the years when I was a bartender in college. Hmm. I have uh, that, I have a demeanor of uh, service. I try to service people and that includes the wrestling fans. I will go around and ask if I can help somebody. I will gladly uh, offer somebody a hand or pour somebody a drink or whatever I need to do to make somebody feel better. But there's only so much slamming me and uh, knocking me I can put up with. But on the other hand, I will do like what's right for business when I have to. And so I think, you know, to be honest, um, when people don't get along, people don't like each other, I think I've been probably had people saying about as much stuff about me over the last few months as anybody and sometimes you just have to take it and move on with business and that's a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. So Brandon, Steve and then John. 
Hi, Tony. Hey, man. Brandt, yes, I'm well aware, sir. I'm <laughs> sorry but, but for the, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, step on you. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, can you tell us how this pay-per-view is selling? Uh, usually get digital right away. Yeah, digital. Uh, so I'm, I, I am going to say I don't have an exact number for you. I think it's, it's probably there's a chance it's going to be the second highest all out ever. It may not be the highest all out. It might be the first time we haven't hit that high. I knew last year the all time high would be challenging. There's a big difference between this year and last year. We were the first professional wrestling show and the only professional wrestling show on Labor Day weekend last year and. We were the third professional wrestling show of the weekend this year. I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, and when I talk about things I wasn't thrilled about, um, I was a little surprised we were the third professional wrestling show this weekend. And it's probably a little bit more challenging in the marketplace um, when it becomes a little more crowded. So our performance, given you know the prior years, we never had this kind of competition. And it's kind of a first for us in AEW to see this kind of crowded marketplace. I'm not sure if this is what we'll see from now on. If it is, when the fight is brought, I will continue uh, bringing up fights of my own, and I have unique ways to do that, and a lot of money to fight with. And uh, this is not a game to me. This is uh, my life, and I don't think it's a joke, uh, and I take it really seriously. And yeah, so I am very happy with the numbers we did. Given the competition we had, I was hoping that it would be the all-time high for All Out, but it, I'm not sure it's going to quite hit that. So it's the first time in AEW pay-per-view in history did not top the number before, probably. But that being said, it's still going to be, uh, again, the second highest number we've ever done for All Out. And this year will end up being the biggest year on pay-per-view in AEW's history by far for pay-per-view revenue. It won't even be close. So uh, even with full gear to come, I'm quite confident this will be our all-time high for pay-per-view. Are you putting a rank with other pay-per-views this year? It's pretty similar to the other pay-per-views this year. I think it'll be Forbidden Door was an unprecedented success and the biggest debut in AEW pay-per-view history. Uh, a lot of the buys were international and the price point is obviously a little bit lower on international. I think this would be more total buys and a higher domestic percentage, so the revenue would be significantly higher than Forbidden Door. I'd expect it to be similar to Double or Nothing. Um, but all out last year was higher than double or nothing was last year. Double or nothing this year was the high all time for double or nothing, obviously. I don't know if we'll quite hit that, but I do think uh, it's going to be uh, in that range. So uh, very good given the competition that we've never faced before. This is kind of an unprecedented marker in my opinion, but it's still the, the number is the number and I have to face the competition out there. But when I compare myself to Jim Crockett Promotions this weekend, I think I got a taste of the same medicine Jim Crockett Promotions took, mm -hmm. but I have a lot more fucking money than Jim Crockett did. <laughs> and I'm not gonna get, I'm serious. I'm not gonna sit back and take this fucking shit. Okay, uh, two more questions here. Go ahead, Steve. Tony, thank you for the time and a great show today. Thank you. And, uh, you know, you look at, you see your biggest, without a doubt, your biggest star, your biggest mainstream attraction, and he goes off the rails a little bit towards your EVPs, another one of your big, one of your big young stars, and you as the leader of the ship, how do you try the best to fuse the entire situation? That is a dicey situation, and it is uh, contentious and uh, frankly challenging, but I have to do what's best for the sake of the company, and everybody you're talking about are great professional wrestlers with big reputations, people that uh, and some of them have been around from the beginning of the company, some of them have been around uh, just for about a year now, but the fact is these are people that drive revenue and they help create jobs for everyone. So I'm not gonna uh, you know, comment on uh, what you may have heard here, but the fact is, like I said earlier this week, it's no secret a lot of professional wrestlers don't like each other, but I think now it's probably more out in the open than it's been in a while. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for the pro wrestling business given what the product that we produce is and it's wrestling matches and it involves tension and people wanting to fight and people know there's a lot of people that want to fight each other around here now and, and I don't think that's terrible. Okay, hey. I'm just going to do last question here. John Alba, last question. Uh, I would just like to dive a little deeper on into specifically the elite and the contributions that they've had to your company as EVPs and helping you get the company off the ground there. And as you brought in different attractions throughout, roles have shifted in, in some degree one way or another. Where do they currently stand within your regime here in AEW? Have their roles changed in any capacity as some of these things have unfolded? Uh, no, I think those guys have been key people in, in the planning and the organization of the shows and, and involved in 
the business from day one. And I think the business has grown and I've had to take on more, but I think those guys have taken on strong roles and you saw tonight, what an amazing match they put together on screen and they have huge behind the scenes contributions in, in terms of the business and um, different aspects, whether it's Kenny and video gaming and, and you know, important revenue streams that we're driving and the Young Bucks and many things, mentoring and uh, the leadership they provide. And, you know, it was a big milestone tonight. I don't want to take it lightly. Like, it's very cool to me that Kenny Omega is the first Triple Crown champion in AEW history. I think it's really cool to have somebody who's been the world champion, a tag team champion, and now the first trios champion. And it's a very cool way for Kenny to come back. And I think Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks is one of the best acts in professional wrestling and behind the scenes, incredibly valuable people too. AJ, did you, okay, no, AJ, do you have anything for me? Did we, you? we were trying to hit that 12, 1230 mark. I just want to let, I want to make sure you're up, you stayed late, and you seem like you wanted to say last something. Last question for AJ. That's, That's it. We're out. AJ's awesome, and I want to make AJ, sure he no, gets yeah, it. Yeah, just, just ask it. Um, first off, great show tonight. And, oh. Thank you, Levin. Um, I'm going to repeat it if the mic didn't hear it. Sure, thanks. First off, great show tonight, and... Um, another thing that people didn't see tonight on TV was the debut of Larry running out into the arena before the show. What was the reaction from you and backstage to Larry running out on stage? Well, Larry uh, is a live wire, and that was a live moment for the live crowd if there ever was one. Uh, I'm glad you didn't run out when there was wrestling going out there, and uh, but luckily, CM Punk got control of the situation and wrangled him in there pretty quick. But Larry uh, got a taste of the live crowd. You know, I, I don't know, Larry likes, I think Larry's like a sheep herding dog is what Phil said. He likes to like herd people and keep them. So if you see that many people, he must've been like, oh man, it's a lot of people. He likes a lot of people in one place. So uh, I thought um, he had a good time. It seemed like he had a good time at the show tonight. Was he, when he arrived, he was in good spirits, Larry. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, really everybody. appreciate thanks. it. Well, hey, great time. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I always really appreciate it. And uh, thanks. And hopefully I'll get to see some of you soon uh, at our next scrum. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.